Hello everyone and welcome to your 83rd Kogo programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about how we can symbolicate crash logs for our macOS applications. Now there are very automatic ways of doing this and there's very manual ways of doing this. We'll talk about sort of the manual approach so that you have an underlying understanding of what the sort of more automatic approaches are doing uh, because they're not magic and it's just kind of nice to understand what those automatic things are doing. But uh, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about is how we can symbolicate a crash log. So let's first start off with the most automatic uh, sort of approach here is you are shipping your application in the Mac App Store. And if you're doing this and you go to your organizer in Xcode, under the application that you are trying to figure out the crashes for, you can go to the crashes tab. And in theory, there should be all the crashes that uh, people have sent you automatically if they are using a Mac App Store application. Now, if you're not in the Mac App Store, that's where beca this becomes a little more tricky because you're not going to get these crash logs back automatically, but uh, you'll probably collect them manually in one way or another, whether it's just people sending you them because they keep hitting this crash, or you have some kind of system that automatically uh, you know, retrieves the crashes for you. Um, that's kind of the system that will be set up. Now, uh, let's look at what happens when I run the application that I, I uh, archived on my own machine. So for this application, I archived it, so I, it's ready for distribution. I went to distribute app, developer ID, and export, and went through the you know whole flow of exporting this application, and then I had the application, which in this case is called lesson 83. Now, if I run this application locally, the crash log will be symbolicated automatically, and we'll see that if I keep going through this example, the application will crash if I keep clicking that button, and uh, we can see that our Mac will automatically try to report this crash, and if I go to the report option, it'll actually automatically symbolicate the crash log. So what this thing here is, is a crash log. And we can, you know, we a lot of the details up here are just kind of telling you what the application is and what version of the application and uh, some other small pieces of information there. But some of the more important information comes in this section here, where uh, here we're told that it was actually trying to perform the selector button pressed. This is uh, probably the best case scenario of uh, a crash log that uh, even wasn't symbolicated and would tell you that this was the action uh, just because it was a button press. Uh, and you can see here below, we then have the actual thread that crashed. So we're told that thread zero crashed. It is the main thread. And we're told exactly where the crash occurred. So on this very top part of the, the stack trace here, we can see that it was in button pressed. And this occurred at uh, the window controller.swift line 22. And if I go into the code, assuming that it's the same code that I shipped this version with, I can go into window controller, we go to line 22, and we can see that this is the line that crashed. And you know, if I look at this for a few seconds, I can realize that, well, I'm accessing these this array, and I'm incrementing this counter. And obviously, when I go past the counter limit, I'm, you know, accessing an out of bounds array. So that's pretty obvious from the crash log, right? And uh, it's pretty easy to get that crash log because the symbols were symbolicated. Now, when the uh, crash is sent to your customers, they will not have symbolicated crashes. And that is when it becomes much more difficult to see. And an example of this is this file that I have here. So how I simulated this, if you wanna do this at home, is I basically sent this application to another computer I crashed the application there, and then I gathered the crash logs, which you can get from console. If you um, go to the console application, there's a section for crashes uh, that will automatically populate all your crashes, and you can get that file uh, from the finder. And then I just sent that file back to this computer, and this is the result. So this is a crash file from a computer that doesn't have uh, the, the debug symbols for this application. And the reason we know that it doesn't is because when we read the section where it crashed, we can still see that it crashed on the main thread, but the difference is that we are not told where in this uh, executable the actual fail occurred. We're just given the address offsets for where this occurred. And you know that's not really useful in this case. We really want to know what exactly, you know, in the human readable form, where 
did this crash actually occur? So the question is, how can we get this? And this is known as symbolicating a crash log. So the manual way to do this is we can go into our um, terminal here. And uh, the first thing we want to check is to make sure that the application uh, that we're validating against is the same as the application um, in the crash logs. So basically, you know, if you had two different versions of the application, you want to make sure that the person didn't crash version 2.2 and you're checking against version 2.1, right? So you want to make sure that the application crash log matches the application you're checking against. And the way we can do this is we can run xerun dwarf dump and we can use this UUID param. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to get the UUID of the executable. So with the, uh, this is the application that I exported. This is the customer version of the application. So it shouldn't be, you know, anything else. It should be the exact same version that you got when you shipped it. And if you want to find uh, both the, the, the debug symbols and the application, you can right click on your archive. This is the one that I, you know, shipped. It should match the version that you're looking for. Go to show in finder. I can right click on this archive, show package contents. And now I have the dsims here. And I also under product applications, I have the application. So I simply move that application into this other folder here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to check to see that this application um, and what we want to do here is we want to check inside the application. So we want to get to the executable itself, which is in contents Mac OS and then the same application name. If I run this, we should get back a UUID that identifies the version of this application. And this UUID should match what the customer crash report is. So if I look in the customer crash report, right, the one that's from the other computer, we can see that the uh, UUID is, where am I looking here? Um, oh, I wanna look down at the symbols. So we can, uh, I think I've gone too far here. So we wanna go down to the binary images section and we can see right on the top here, we have our, uh, basically this is the application uh, binary and we can check right next to that, which is the UUID that represents this binary. And this UUID should match this UUID. If it doesn't, you're comparing a different crash log to a different application. And if the lines of code have changed in any way, you could be comparing something that's very off. So that's uh, this at least verifies that you know we're checking the right application, comparing it to the right crash log. Okay, now how do we actually convert the addresses, right? So we have some empty addresses here that uh, don't actually match up to um, the the uh, the names of the methods that we're trying to find. And how can we figure that out? Well, we can run a different command, which is A2S, which stands for address to symbols. And we pass in the path for our application, which is uh, less than 83 contents Mac OS and the same thing again. And then the next param is going to be our uh, architecture. And in this case, it's going to be x86, uh, 64. And if you don't know what the architecture is, uh, it should be at the top of the application crash log. Um, it should be there depending on the application architecture that you shipped with. But for all Mac OS applications, uh, I believe this should be the architecture that uh, you're currently using. Um, so with that, we have uh, then the address, the load address for this binary. So to find that, we go down to the binary images again. And uh, when you're looking for the application type that you just selected, you want to copy this address. And this will be the address in which uh, this binary is loaded. And then we want to get the actual addresses that we're trying to uh, decode. And these addresses are these addresses right here. So we want to translate this address to the symbol. And to do this, we can just paste that address and I can put in as many as I want. So I'm gonna copy these two in, paste both of those, hit return. And we can see that uh, we are going to um, symbolicate both of those addresses. So we have the, the top one, the, the first address that I put in was that button press call. We can see that it points to the address uh, or the file rather window controller swift.swift line 22 
right? And that's what we got from that symbolicated log that we had on our own machine earlier. But this just shows that we can automatically uh, collect this. Now, you might be wondering, how is it automatically doing this? Well, uh, Xcode's actually going to automatically find uh, the, or this command rather, is automatically going to find the dsim file that you have. So again, the dsim file was this file in our archive. And again, it just stands for debug symbols. This file right here is the very important file you need in order to uh, uh, make this translation. So this file contains all the translations of addresses to the symbols. Without this file, we can't perform this operation. So uh, this, again, this file is automatically generated by Xcode. You don't really have to do anything. You just have to make sure that this archive still exists. If you have deleted this archive, none of this will be possible. Okay, the last thing that I wanna show is a very nice automatic way of doing this because doing it through the command line is kind of a pain. You gotta do these automatic address offsets. Uh, you know, why bother doing that? So the much easier way is to use a handy dandy application, uh, which I will leave a link for. There's a bunch of different applications that do this, but this one's an open source one. It's called Max Symbolicator. And it's got this nice little UI, which you know I greatly appreciate. And you can go into the file that, uh, wherever your crash log is, right? So this is the crash log that I got from the customer. I can drag this into Max Symbolicator. It actually does the work of automatically finding that archive that matches this crash log. So it does all that work of trying to match up the UUIDs so that it knows that the crash is going to automatically you know, uh, find this DSIM. If for whatever reason it doesn't find it uh, and you have the DSIM somewhere, you can also just drag it into the application and it'll, it'll do it that way as well. But once you're happy with this, you can hit Symbolicate and the app will automatically Symbolicate your crash logs. So you can see in this section here, it has those two addresses that um, were you know previously uh, unknown uh, values and it symbolicates those automatically for you. So again, I'll leave a nice link for this application in the uh, description below, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This was mostly brought to you by a patron that asked for this tutorial and uh, as we were discussing it uh, in our little uh, Discord chat, realized that it was uh, probably a pretty good tutorial to do because uh, this isn't exactly the most straightforward thing in the world. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that and I will see you guys next week. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.